a double X. Worldwide podcast. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, positive power 21. Jerry was live worldwide. That's right, you tell them, little buddy. What's up, family? What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome to Positive Power Double XI Christian Media. You're listening to the Late Show. That's right, Late Night with Jerry's Live Worldwide and Kelly Holland out of Charm City. We hope everybody having a a beautiful, beautiful day. Thursday just came so fast. We're about to celebrate a, 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 a no-name holiday this Monday. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. And I want to hear Kelly take on that. <laughs> What's up, Kelly Holland? <laughs> What's going on? Hey, 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 Batman. Hey, Baltimore. How's everybody? I'm okay. How are you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, I want to get your take on the no-name <laughs> holiday. Is it still no name? Okay. <laughs> What's your take? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't doing nothing for these folks. <laughs> what you want to call it? We call it our holiday. How about that? Our holiday. Man. I like that. I wanted to ask you a question about something, but this this may not be the platform. (laughs) It could get somebody in trouble. I'm going to have to talk to you (laughs) another day. Some some interesting information I got from from somebody. You know how people, when they're deathbed, they just start telling you everything? You know, like stuff they've been withholding for like, (laughs) seem like thousands of years. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, this this is gonna be interesting. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna like this one. You got some information that's supposed to go to the grave. Oh, I'm interested. Yeah, man. Man. <laughs> yeah. That's this is a real interesting one. I, you know, it's so interesting. I forgot who actually told me this. I gotta, I gotta sit back and think. <laughs> who did I talk to yesterday? So anyway, um, so did you have you having a good you had a good week? Absolutely, the Lord was mighty at all and had all power throughout my week. And I'm grateful for that because, you know, we don't get our Sunday sanctuary dose. I got to catch it online and try to hold on to that for the rest of the week. But discipleship started um, back up. So classes within ministries are starting up. Um, And so I'm glad to have that connection, you know, that sister connection um, and growing in God with our discipleship lessons. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, um, so is it working for you? You know, um, doing the online thing. I know a lot of people getting a little, you know, restless. But then you have some people taking everything they can find. I'm, you know, I'm re- I'm texting people, see how they're doing. He's like, oh, I can't talk now. I'm I'm on, I'm taking a class. I'm like, what are you taking a class in? <laughs> you know, it's like everybody back in college or something. You know, it's interesting. People Absolutely. stepping up. Yeah, learning new things. Well, you know. I guess it's about time sometimes for people to learn some new tricks. Cause I know for me, you know, go, you know, YouTube has always been my go-to, you know, um, you know, you can rewind it. You can watch it as often as you want. And, and, but it is interesting sometimes to hear some of the, you know, the mainstream people giving up information. Cause I know this, week, I think this was the week that I believe LL Cool J uh, was sponsoring an event about, you know, about advertising. And I think it started on the fifth. Mm-hmm. I, I think I sent everybody a link to to couple conferences that was going up, going on, and everybody seemed to be um, embracing it too. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be free soon on YouTube, so I'm just waiting it out. <laughs> but um, I think that'd be nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And I, but I want to tell some people who's out there who's 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 um, who still don't have quite an understanding of, of marketing and advertising. Um, check out. Um, P. Diddy did a real good piece. I think it came out last year called A Revolt. And they was talking about, you know, the changes in the, in the music industry and how independents can get their music out there. Because everybody thinks it's a, it's a big secret how you get your music out there. And uh, But basically, the panel people were just saying, you know, you just got to grind and don't stop. You know how some people do things, don't see results, and they quit. You know, like, for example, tell us a little bit Correct. about, I know we got a guest coming on, and I'm not even sure if she's in the queue yet. Let me see, because I don't know everybody's name. <laughs> Miss Jackie, <laughs> is, is that you, Miss Jackie? Because I don't want to go on in my conversation and forget about her. I don't think that's her. We won't forget. Okay, I'm going to have to help, help promote her ad. Well, anyway, 
a lot of people still don't quite understand about marketing and, and advertising and promoting. And like you, I know you started your own nonprofit. And, you know, of course, when you have a nonprofit, mm-hmm. you know, it's like you got to get out in the community and knock on doors seem like it. What, what, what were some of the things that you had to do to get the word out to the community, what, what you're doing and what you're doing for them? Uh, definitely um, working with Positive Power Double XI. Um, that platform um, definitely helps out with getting the word out. Um, however, it's all through social media right now. Um, I'll either go through Facebook or I'll go through Instagram. Um, and, but before even launching to that platform, I had to begin with creating the the website. You know, so having that hub for people to come to so they're not looking in five different places for your work. They can come to your website and have access to you through social media or through whatever platforms you make available through them. So it's just kind of having that that electronic component is a necessary component this day and age when it comes to starting any business or promoting any business. Yeah, that's right. And you will start to see and hear if if your name is getting out there, I mean, I know uh, 2021, 2021 will make uh, seven years for us, you know, that we've been in this business. So we're actually, I believe we're actually coming up in our seven. I got to add up. I thought we got started in 2013. So I got to add the numbers up. But anyway, the deal is I know the first five years was going to be a lot of connecting and in, in in moving pieces around, you know, like what you start out with may not be the end result. So sometimes you may start out in something which is just a stepping stone to something even larger that God is going to bless you with. Like I had no idea I was going to be doing documentaries and television was like the last mm-hmm. thing on my list. Because when my son was coming home from Morgan with these big old cameras and big lights that were super hot and, you know, he he had to write his own scripts and all that stuff and find people to help him. I was like, that's it's it's interesting the movie industry and you know, film, but it's just too many moving pieces and it's expensive. You know, and then, then the learning curve is like ridiculous. <laughs> You're talking about like years. So, you know, I, I mean as much as I wanted to get into it because I actually went to school for, you know, for cable production, television production. Mm-hmm. I actually learned in Comcast mm-hmm. uh production studio you know editing and everything and but i was like it's been it's been a minute and everything had changed so much you know so when he was inviting me out to you know do the sporting events like he was filming stuff for espn and he was doing music videos for some of the up-and-coming hip-hop artists in florida and and them places i was like man do i really want to even do that (laughs) i mean you gotta pack your stuff up you gotta travel now you gotta watch your stuff you gotta take it everywhere you go because because it's not yours if it gets stolen because a lot of times we do rent a lot of the equipment because it was really really expensive back then so um so when this happened so when when this happened you know i was like really blown away that you know where i'm at right now you know you look back look turn around look behind you see where you came from that was a long trip kelly Mm -hmm. yeah so but but look at the growth you know and the mind change that occurred during that process avenues that you wasn't even interested in now you're fully fledged involved you know and and that's just the power of god right there because we have our own concept of of success Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And then some of us get complacent, Um, but we never really understand until we fully commit to his to to his mission um, where it is that God is leading us and taking us. Um, And so we we may start off with only three goals and Mm -hmm. end up with 30, you know, just based off of the power that he's placed in us to do more, to do better, to do greater, to reach his people, to feed his sheep, you know, and, and to be that, that role model. So I'm grateful that the transition occurred in me and for those that I'm connected with, because we're all just kind of improving within ourselves and helping others to jump on board. So I, I, I think it's magnetic to an extent, the way yeah. the growth is occurring. And that's a wonderful thing, that's isn't right. it? Yeah, yeah. And, and what you just said kind of reminded me a little bit what um, uh, Dr. Eric Holmes said um, on, on his show. And I think he mm-hmm. actually said this on a documentary that uh, we aired uh, in over in, um, in Atlanta. He said something about mm-hmm. uh, the seeds. You know, certain people is important for other people's success. 
You know, so in other words, mm. if I wasn't if I wasn't able just to get just close to where I am today, that mean it wouldn't have made room for Kelly to be able to spread her way. So Absolutely. in other words, cause you never know who's listening to this podcast. Absolutely. And next thing you know, you call me saying, hey, Jerry, I got a job on WWW so-and-so, so-and-so, you know, and you're quitting your job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so those kind of things. Um, exactly. open up doors that some of them didn't realize it was for someone else too you know someone else's blessing so um, that's that's incredible Absolutely. yeah yeah where well, would I be without Father Power Double XI y'all would never know Kelly Holland of Charm City you would never know yeah, <laughs> yeah. and so many more right where would Shea Sands be where would Dr. Eric Holmes be where would Paula G be where would Lakeisha Mosley be where would our talent be if we right. did not have that platform of Jerry that man never went and got the education he received and bought into the system the way he did and yeah. elevated yourself the way you do. Where would we be? We would we would not have any of this. That's so right. you know, you are like the spine <laughs> at this point, right? Yeah. For our little network, and, and we're just branching off as extensions of you and your work. That's truly all it is. Right. And, you know, so. Where will we be without those stepping stones? Dr. Eric Holmes is completely right about that. Yeah, and, that was, and it was kind of spooky when I was listening to him say that because, you know, we was here in the studio shooting, you know, shooting because it's been a while since I mm-hmm. shot a episode for Who I Am, all those other episodes people watching now. I shot, man, it was like doing a Newsom Awards. I think the first one that I met, um, you know, Dr. Kelly Hi, and Kelly Charles and all those guys. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it had to been like three, four years ago when me and Jordan was first being introduced to film. We were still, you know, learning the equipment, you know. So that what we aired yesterday with Dr. Jenkins. Dr. Jenkins aired yesterday in Atlanta. And what he was saying, and someone actually said something on the post that they watched it. And, um, and and he probably was really blown away because a lot of the stuff he talked about, I don't remember him saying it. You know, like this guy was actually in, in prison. You know, this is the guy that's the, now the mm-hmm. CEO of the Life Coaching School of Arkansas, right? This is the guy. Okay. Now he was in prison for selling drugs, but he was he was a he was actually really pretty good baseball player. But because he didn't go to school, he didn't get good grades, so he got kicked off the baseball team, which later on led him to spending different times in prison. But he got married when he was in prison. His second wife basically kind of helped him get him out of there because that was the reason why they allowed probation. So he got married and I met her Mm -hmm. beautiful woman, beautiful children. His son is actually a a superstar baseball player right now. Hitting smacking home runs over the fence and stuff. I saw a piece of footage of him yesterday, but the, but the way I'm going at Dr. Dr. Jenkins, when he finally got himself together at the, and then being mentored to, to on his job by this, this, by this man, now this guy, you know, he holds, I think he holds two master's degrees, certified coaching school. Mm-hmm. He just certified Shea, okay. just certified Dr. Holmes. And he had a number of people he had certified two years ago because they, they came here in our studio to learn about media. And he hosts an mm-hmm. award show every year where he's giving people awards for their community services. You know, so he's, He's doing a whole lot. He's empowering his community. And people come as far as as uh, Atlanta to attend his event because his son was he was there, his oldest son, and he's actually a photographer, an excellent photographer. Matter of fact, very friendly, very polite young man, very humble guy. And uh, me and Mo had a chance to go out there and uh, do the red carpet event. And we, you know, we was able to meet some people who have who've been here before. Uh, one girl is actually leading um, a charge in uh, people getting themselves fit and loving themselves. She's always posting mm-hmm. how positive the you know the product she's using is helping her. And just you know, it's just you know you're right. It's just planting so many seeds, like Dr. Holmes was saying. You know, it's like planting a you know apple apple seed in your backyard, and it may not bearing no fruit for you but for the next person that buy his house it could be bearing the best apples they probably ever had in their life you know so uh it's, a, it's, it's an interesting journey very interesting exactly right. yeah and i'm grateful that our paths 
cross on purpose, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now I have I guess she hasn't arrived. I haven't heard from from the promoter. So I guess it's is you and I. <laughs> For right now. Okay, Batman. Well, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Because <laughs> we can go on and on. And right. Now we have our chance to go on and on. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but, you know, um, you know, some so people... I was go gonna. Ahead. Well, I'm, I'm not gonna talk about the other thing because that was that was that's something, we're gonna have to talk about that offline. <laughs> that was that's crazy. I keep trying to bring it up, like so. What you want to say? Like, I know, I, know. I just it just came to mind because I thought we was gonna just talk for a short time, and I just want to put that in your ear real quick. But um, talking okay. about um, a lot of us have been talking about the shift. Uh, I was actually uh, texting back and forth with um, uh, Coach Gene. You know. And Coach Gene had a mm-hmm. show on today about, uh, you know, people who had to um, almost give up their life for their family member to survive. And she was one. Her husband had to sacrifice everything because she had a 1% chance of living uh, just, just almost one year ago, mm-hmm. a little over a year ago. Uh, you know, she was being flown in a helicopter and they told him, we don't think she's going to make this flight. You know, it was like that. So, wow. Right. So now she's on this show bringing powerful people from the medical community that could be saving somebody every time she air because she's giving enough information to provoke fear. And you saying, you know what? I'm not really doing anything positive to my body right now, but destroying it. And, and now that we have COVID, you're just making it easy for COVID mm-hmm. to take you out. That's what she's saying. Every time she air her show, yeah. you know, so, you know, really, but- Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. That that that, that kind of great uh takes my attention in a different direction. Um shout out to uh forty five having COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's crazy. His own kind of COVID. <laughs> I don't know what COVID he's talking about. Maybe he had it in his pocket. I, I know I ain't right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Look, he's so indignant with it though. He's just like, Yeah, I got COVID but I'm cured. And everybody else gotta wait fourteen days, be quarantined in all these unfamiliar places, but his ridiculous tale. <laughs> he's like, Yeah, two I got days. shot, I'm all fine. I'm two good. days. <laughs> yeah, two days, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, right. you know, as much as I like to entertain that subject, I'm not even going to go in line with that one. But um, all I can say okay, okay. for people, you know, you, you got to really be careful what you hear out there. I mean, right now, um, Coach Coach Gene, uh, if you guys ever want to go back and listen to a segment, even today, even though her segment was about uh, two members of, you know, two two separate family members that had to care for people who that was on their, you know, on their dying bed, you know, living with cancer. Because one lady, mm. uh, her son had had sickle cell, sickle cell. He got in sickle cell, I think. Well, that's, right. Is that that's the blood disease, right? Heart disease. No, maybe yes, it was it leukemia. Is. My bad was leukemia. He got in leukemia. That's the cancer, right? The cancer. Yeah, mm-hmm. in the blood, and he got it when he was seven years old. And she says she had to. Jesus. Give up her life because you know they said it takes five years. I think she said three to five years to heal a person from that cancer because there's so many, so much medication, so much treatment, mm-hmm. and she had to totally sacrifice her life. Which she felt like, wow, you know, I, I like my life, but she had to do that for her son so he can be able to live. So, so she she had to do she had to do that routine every day for. And I believe she said five years. That's a lot. You know, that's hard when you're handling a it person. A How about this? How about you just taking care of, a, a you know, an older family member that's in their 90s that the doctor gave them two weeks to live? Imagine how hard that is, you know. And they say they live past two weeks. But it's now it's two weeks became three oh, months, my. you know. But you got to change their it's, diaper. It's, it's hard. Yeah. It's all of that, right? It is. But it is hard. Um, for the, So right now I help my mom take care of my grandfather and albeit I don't do the portion she does, mm. it's, it's not balanced at all. <laughs> okay, uh-huh. but when I do help, you know, we enjoy that time together. But it let's let's just say like let's change it around and make it into uh, a special needs child. Mm-hmm. If you have a special needs child, these things are they may seem hard and and, and a burden, but they are such a joy to do to be with your child, right. um, regardless of their handicap. And so to me, I think, I think 
when people are passing, it's it it's it has to be in perspective. Older people, to some extent, I'm not as you know harsh or I, I won't say raw with the emotion because it's kind of like well they lived a good life right, yeah. they've been here for a while mm-hmm. they were sick for a minute I'm right. kind of mentally prepared right yeah. um, to an extent um, <laughs> to an extent because if anything happened to my Mr. Charlie that's my granddaddy I know I'm going to be a wreck because we hang out you know we, we was together today for hours you know and so when you have that bond with people death is just difficult to deal with anyway and then when you fighting for their life <laughs> and you right there in the hospital with them and you know you see what they're going through and you're answering questions and then you got to bring them home and, and care for them it's difficult especially if they're on the downside of that slope um i experienced something like that recently this year uh, when my dad passed away he was in the hospital in february for a while and i'm fighting with the doctors and all that trying to make them stay and they keep trying to send them home and they got their way he came home and a few months later he passed away what would I have done differently if they let him stay or how would I have been able to keep his life longer? You know, I think about these type of things. So mm-hmm. I definitely understand the sacrifice. Sometimes we jump in head first because it's like, I don't care what needs to be done. I'm willing to do it. If anything was to happen to any member in your household, Batman, I'm sure none of this radio stuff has priority. You're going to definitely be there for your family. Facts right oh yeah oh yeah it's not even it's not it's yeah it's not even a decision <laughs> so, right. and so but for five years that's definitely a decision she could have been got an in-home nurse she could have put that person in hospice mm. she could have did anything with that type of time you know so yeah. to to sit there and to constantly love to constantly give to constantly be available for somebody that's a gift of god because that's a choice that has to be made and so for some people it's burden, for some people it's a joy. So yeah. I'm I'm not really sure if time changes that commitment or not. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's a relationship. Who knows? Yeah, yes. You know, um, you know, thinking about um the fact that you know you you know you thinking about somebody you you know you're trying to make their last final days as comfortable as possible and you know spending time with them and a lot of people won't have that blessing to be able to say goodbye to a loved one you know some people are going to just get a phone call you know like you know so it's like uh (laughs) so it's so past right right. yeah you got to deal with it right then and there right so that's that's (laughs) hard too you know sometimes none of it's easy you know because you know you remember last year we was Mm -hmm. here you know helping my my wife with her dad you know his because he went he like Mm -hmm. he he went a lot longer than we thought he was going to go at least the doctor said because i guess when you give them love and you're nurturing them and you're there every day they kind of get their extra strength in them some kind of way, you know, and able to make it. Praise God. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, life is, um, especially now. This is a, this is a, this is the time now where people have to. And sometimes you want, you know, it was God really trying to communicate with us because we all have so much toxic. And us, we taking in toxin, we breathing in toxin, mm-hmm. we drinking toxin. It's like God has really built us to handle some stuff, you know. So you, Sydney, yeah, aren't we resilient? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, you figure that that is, and then you know that's some serious stress on your body, and then you have to handle the everyday, day to day things, you know, whether you got kids or like you said, a special mm-hmm. needs child. You know, if you decide to let your kids have a pet, you know you got to worry about that. You know, it's oh god, yeah, it's a it's a lot of walking the dog. Yeah, it's like how much, how much man? Yeah, like for me, um, you know, it was a challenge just getting the dog. My wife was like, "Well, you know, we had a dog before, and it takes a lot of responsibility, and, and the kids just not going to do it. It's going to be one of us doing it." And I had, you know, and then once I looked at the fact that I was already chronically sick anyway and i needed some help to get out of bed and to exercise the dog really wasn't a bad idea <laughs> you know because she definitely gonna wake you up <laughs> yeah she motivates she gets you out of bed she will not you just can't say oh give me 10 minutes <laughs> she don't know what that means <laughs> <laughs> you know she's gonna sit there and look at you and if you don't get up she's gonna box you know because she's ready to eat she's ready to go out and take care of her business so really <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I, I tell people all the time, I said, I, I think, you know, because I go to the doctor all the time, you know, whether it's patient first or my endocrinologist, mm-hmm. and they will all say, man, you did not look like somebody who lived with your type of diabetes. Because, you know, I was, they see the patient. You can see them coming. Oh, yeah, he got it. Type two, type mm-hmm. five. He got, he got one through got five. Sugar. Yeah, he got that sugar. He, <laughs> he smelled like sugar. You know, he get that fruity flavor. <laughs> That's the truth, though. They got they get a fruity flavor. Yeah, I kid you not. People with diabetes, they have a they have a they have a fruity flavor in them. Yeah, you can read that. Look that up. Yeah, I'm gonna look it up right now. Yeah, because it's because it's because it stays in the bloodstream in the whole body. When you when you got levels up to 300, 400, you pure sugar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're pure sugar. So um. Yeah. So that's when that's when, you know, even let me tell you. I was I looked at, I was looking up a lot of different things when it came to fasting cuz everybody kept saying, you know, you know, to get close to God, you got to fast. And then, you know, they always say, well, you know, diabetics can't really fast. But then when you start finding out that fasting don't right. always have to be sun up to sun down. It could be 2 hours intermediate. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Right. And I was looking that up and I found this doctor and he was a young doctor too. And he was saying that um a lot of his colleagues that was his age that went through school during the time period, you know, said so they starting to feel like they're not helping their patients. They're not looking at it for the money because they owe more than they're making to the to the you know, their student loans. Mm-hmm. So money don't mean nothing to them. The right. right. So they're like really concerned that that the medication is not really Helping their patients is just keeping them alive, but they're not living. Um, what, what kind of lifestyle they say? They're not living a. Um, <laughs> uh, what is it? What's that word? It, well, we just say it. they're not living a comfortable lifestyle because they're in pain. They live day to day, and then they not do, helping themselves because they're craving everything that's bad for them. You know. So he's, you know, this is, I'm listening to him on you. This is on YouTube. This is just, this guy's just going on. He's just feeling Whoa. so guilty about his profession and what he's not doing for his patients. So he started studying alternative medicine, you know, and then I found it was more, it wasn't just him. It was a bunch of them that was like that. They were in, in uh, what did they call them? So internalists. And they started understanding alternative mm-hmm. medicine, you know, studying um, how vitamins and herbs and minerals work. And then you found out that most of the medication contains some of those items, <laughs> but some other stuff too, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. right. We just don't know how to make it right. ourselves. Yeah, he, but, but that was, <laughs> right. But that was one of the things he was saying in the medical school. They only really get an hour on nutrition. So they really have to send you to somebody to really tell you how you need to eat. But my doctor, my endocrinologist, you know, he was a very intelligent man. You, you know what he used to tell me? He said, you know, Jay, a whole lot of anything is bad for you. <laughs> Even water. I know, right? Even water. Everything. Yeah. He said, try to live off of water. Yeah, try to live off of water. (laughs) See what happens. (laughs) You become toxic. So I was like, wow, Doc, that's interesting. You're going to lose a whole lot of weight. Yeah. (laughs) So so you know what he said? (laughs) And this is what he said. And this is for anybody that's out there. He said, hold up your hand. He said, your meal. He said, I don't care how many meals you have. It's supposed to be able to fit in your hand. In other words, an apple used to be a meal. <laughs> That's what he was telling me. I said, really? Yeah. At that time, yeah. you know, if we do a lot more grazing and a, and a lot less heavy meals, those three meals, we would be in a much better shape. Our metabolism would burn a lot faster. We wouldn't be dumping food in our system the way we do now. We just kind of dump. We get the itis. We take a nap. Everything's slow. <laughs> we just repeat that cycle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, because I can, I can relate because we stretch our stomach because of and and, and I heard this on a sh- podcast with uh, with Doctor Gene that one of the doctors said that people don't realize when you drink carbonated beverages it just expands your stomach <laughs> so now you just making it bigger it and does bigger and bigger it does especially when people do mineral water instead of um, you know um, spring water or uh, flat water. Um, that's good. The mineral water, the Pelagrigios or the brands of that nature, um, it, it's good for a good belch, right? Mm. But it's not good for everyday usage. So you exactly. keep those like a ginger ale. That's your non-sweet ginger ale where you need to get that, you know, that gas out your chest. But it's not meant for everyday usage. 
just like you said, it'll, it'll expand your stomach, give you a false sense of uh, fullness, and you might even dehydrate yourself because um, <laughs> you're not drinking that pure, that pure source of water. Um, and I only say this because I recently had a, a family member go into the hospital mm. for dehydration, um, and he said, well, I'm always drinking water. No, you're always drinking that, 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 that uh, carbonated water. That's right. the difference. Yeah, yeah, um, the sparkling right. water and add lemon in there or get it with lime, right? You need some real water. Because mm-hmm. I remember my doctor said, you drink water? And people say, yeah, I drink coffee. <laughs> He's like, nope, it's <laughs> no. not going to do it. <laughs> water. You got to have some uh, real Unchanged water. water, unmodified water, no no sugar packets, no flavor aids. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I found fascinating, too, is... um. You know, listening to some of these professionals, it's like we really don't. Nobody never really taught us about our body. You know, they gave you that quick science in school. You know, and basically you're just trying to memorize enough so you can pass the test and the multiple choice and connect the dots and, and stuff like that. But the human anatomy, it's <laughs> a it yeah, it's actually a story being told the way the body is designed. If you ever get a chance to go out to um, YouTube and you look up the endocrine system. Um, they have these really great 3D systems and show you how the bloodstream is used to carry nutrition and, and different hormones to different parts of the body. Because what I didn't realize this, and and I learned this because of some idiots that I I was dealing with. When you, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm being nice about that too. They, they know who I'm talking about. I know you're listening. Praise the Lord. Praise when the Lord you, for the nice. This is the deal about <laughs> about people who are diabetic, and this is what people don't realize. And and I, and I and I even thought this because I was wondering what was going on with one of my buddies because he was a very sharp guy. This guy, he can do he was he can do everything. If I named him, you probably say, "Wow, is he is he single?" <laughs> but anyway, mm, he's okay. actually he's actually not <laughs> well, he's not around anymore. To even you know, you just know his name. So anyway, this guy okay. used to say some crazy stuff, and I was like, "Where's he getting this stuff from?" You know, what happened was. When mm-hmm. when 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 that when that glucose hang around in the blood system for a really long time, it's not doing anything. It's not it's not becoming anything. So you have energy. So you, basically, what happened? All your main organs are being deprived. So in other words, you you need those those that the, right. But the hormones do special things to like your brain. Your brain has to have nutrition. So that's one of the first things that get deprived mm-hmm. that a lot of people don't realize is your brain. So you know how people always say, "Yeah, make sure you get a good meal so you can do well on your tests." That's why they say that it's because cool. right, exactly. So. So they're not concerned about your stomach growling. They want you to think. Right. You can't think. You can't think. Right. Because what happens is that, that brain is the first thing to get deprived of energy. And it just started. It wants to shut down. You know, you're getting sleepy. You know, you just want to close your eyes, mm-hmm. you know. And that's what happens with diabetics. Right. It happens to them all the time. You know, they, 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 their, their brain I is like- getting deprived. Hmm. I'm happy that um, you know just just people as a as a whole are becoming a lot more uh, responsible for their health, mm-hmm. um, what they eat. Um, a lot more fitness activities have definitely been taking place throughout the whole COVID season, um, and so people are really they 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 they're really looking into what they're putting into their bodies a lot deeper. The microscopic uh, lens is out and I'm glad for it because the meat industry is, is suffering and it needs to, um, as well as the, um, all of the, the former normal ways of, of eating has been modified to an extent. And I'm glad for it because these places in America, um, like to add stuff to our food all day long. And anytime so I stopped buying chicken, right? Mm-hmm. Why? Um, because it's too expensive to get it without any additives, right. which is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You know, if you if I'm already at the market, that means you butchered it. You caught it, you butchered it, you packaged it, and you made it available for me. That's where I go to the market for. I don't want to pick up a pack of chicken and it says 15% solution added. Solution of what? What, what? what are you trying to make me eat? You know what I mean? With, what, what, what with is the it? chicken eight, so, <laughs> whatever like, the chicken eight, that's what you're gonna yeah, eat. All, you are what you what you eat, eat, right? You are what you eat. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a great it's a great um documentary on Netflix. I can never think of the name of that one, but yeah, this one was actually, but this is one of the best ones I've ever seen. This one actually made me give up red meat and chicken. It's cold turkey. And you can ask my wife, she be trying to force me to eat chicken. I still, I was like, well, I'm just going to go to the freezer and grab some frozen fish real quick. But this is the deal. Uh, It was a a guy, um, (laughs) it was a guy, he was an MME fighter. Or UFC fighter, and he yeah. had a, he's, I think he was in his 40s, and he got an injury training on both knees. His, I think it was his ligaments. So he wanted to find a way to heal, speed up the, the speed up the recovery, because he know at his age it's going to be slow, and he only had a, enough time to get, you know, get heal up and train for his fight, you know? Mm-hmm. So, he was studying everything. He was, he was, he was contacting people who were, were older, than their competitors and he wanted to find out what were they doing differently than they did years mm-hmm. ago which was really interesting because he was talking to these people this guy that was that ran straight f- for days i think he did one of those um r- r- run around the world type events and then he talked to this woman okay. who who beat some people that were like 10 years yeah. younger than her and i think in a in a hundred meter race or something a bicyclist anybody that that was older then the competitors, he wanted to talk to them. You know, he's talking about champions. So he ended up meeting the woman who was preparing the meals for the Tennessee Titans. Because remember, the Tennessee Titans wow. in the playoffs. Yeah, this was a really interesting documentary. I mean, this guy was everywhere. This this woman, she was a, she was a culinary specialist, but she specialized in vegan meals. And her husband was an NFL football player for the Tennessee Titans, right? So what happened was during okay. practice, you know, remember the Titans weren't doing all that well midway through the season, right? No, they weren't. And what happened was this one guy started showing phenomenal abilities, and people were starting to notice on the team. Was like, dude, what are you doing? Are you on steroids? He said, no, I'm not changing my diet. Mm-hmm. You know, my wife is cooking for me now, and, you know, all three meals and blah, blah, blah. So they so, so so some of the guys said, "Look, man, I want some of that, man." So they was like, you know, buying the packages from it too. Next thing you know, it was up to I think twelve players on the team took on this new diet plan, and that's when the Tennessee Titans were beating teams that they shouldn't have beat. Remember, they beat the Ravens really bad. They should have beat the Chiefs. I think they got railroaded on that one, but. <laughs> they they was like you know the guy said that their bodies were able to heal really really fast after the game normally they got sitting in ice and then he said he could play a game the next yeah. day and you know you normally can't do that playing football you know you need a day or two off all that they beating you up right all right. that inflammation that context right for the right the body's you know full of inflammation is already inflamed anyway but they got mm-hmm. a, muscles packed on top of it but this guy you know, and he and he he's not a spring chicken either compared to, you know, because he was in the league for a while. So anyway, he ended up um, uh, convincing a lot of the players to do that. And even some of the players on the Ravens have, have done that because, remember, they got beat by this team. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, that guy just got um, mm-hmm. a big multi-million five-year deal worth, I think, what, $80 million or something like that. And he has shown remarkable – skill sets this year this dude is like running up on players knocking the ball away i mean he caused all these forced fumbles he's like all over the field he's tackling he's rushing a quarterback he's covering tight ends this is unheard of what he's been doing the ravens didn't stop now one minute they said oh we ready to play him right now they gave him an extension <laughs> during the third before the third game of the season you never hear about that that never happens <laughs> so they must be seeing some stuff in practice and everything that's caused him to say, wait a minute, we got to keep him. And he's been on Twitter talking how sometimes he was struggling with, be, you know, with the vegan diet. You know, this was like, you know, mm-hmm. during COVID, he had died. He had tried it, I think, last year during the Pro Bowl, but he slipped up. You know, when he went over to play the Pro Bowl in Florida, he slipped up, mm-hmm. but he went back to it. So it got to be something to that, you know, the way the body performs. Man. Yeah. I was craving some bacon today. I smelled that bacon <laughs> in the air. <laughs> I don't I know like, good Lord, it's been a minute. <laughs> yes, I'm going nowhere near, Kelly. I'm I know. I feel I you. a deep breath, that man. I, <laughs> I feel you, Kelly. But guess what I did, Kelly? But you know what? Since I replaced it, 
with red, red meat and chicken with seafood and tuna. I mean, my mm-hmm. wife, see, we both know the best places but to get grilled shrimp. Seafood, though. Yeah, it's, but we don't we don't overindulge Wait. in it though. It's not not a lot of it. You know, we do very little. Not like we like make so, a let meal. Me ask you. Mm-hmm. How often do you have a meat component with your dinner? Like that's the thing that people have to get through their heads. You do not always have to have a quote unquote square meal. You can eat all the sides mm-hmm. and be just fine. Yeah. Well, the deal is what people don't realize is meat is a secondary protein, and that's what I learned in that film. The animals are not really giving mm-hmm. you the protein. You remember. Cows are grass-fed animals, so you're really getting the protein from what they're eating. It's the grass. The grass is the grass. The feed. The, their feed is the primary, and that's the problem with most of the meat now because the animals are not grass-fed. A lot of them are eating corn, so you're not really getting protein yeah. no more. Yeah. That's the problem, and that's why they're sick. You know, and that's why they're shooting them up so they can look they healthy. Sick. Right, they're shooting them up with well, that's where with antibodies. The Right, the pharmaceutical company makes their money off of the animals. You think they're right. making big money off of us? No, it's those it's those patients that don't talk back well, that are getting these injections. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask you about the seafood, because um, I've been noticing, and also from these Netflix documentaries, mm-hmm. that the seafood is being injected, the shrimp are being injected. We want everything bigger, right? Right. So everything is being injected with these solutions. I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, I don't this, eat this it. is the deal with with me when it comes to shrimp. If it if it looks super <laughs> like super shrimp, I won't bother that one. Won't go mm-hmm. back there again. We <laughs> um we do a lot of salmon, but mostly we do the wild. We don't do the farm because you see how they farm them up. They, it's farm. like a thousand million of them living in one pond. Exactly. Yeah, like if they if they're in a yeah. pond, like a real pond or a lake, raise then it's different, you know. But if they have them like in a like an incubator type situation, and, and, and it's on the package too. If you look real closely, they they have to reveal that. Wow, so, uh, yep. Mm-hmm. So you got to be careful with that, and you can tell the difference too because the ones that come out of the the um the farms they're huge. It's like wow, is that a was that a salmon? <laughs> Give me that. You know, it right. like a steak. Why is it so big? Yeah. Exactly. So the frozen joints, chicken, that's why I usually don't buy the fresh ones because I know where they're coming from. I usually buy the frozen ones because they are coming from probably Canada and, you know, where there's a lot of lakes and stuff like that, you know, rivers. Mm-hmm. And, yep. So you got to you gotta be, you got to do your research. Also, you get a lot of your protein from beans. Beans is a excellent sauce. I love beans. Black beans. I do, we do we a lot of um, a lot of tacos now. No beans. Fix Little it up. Beans. Yeah. Make it creative. Mm. Lot of, so do you, know, you have your tacos with beans? Hmm? With beans? Do yeah. you eat the tacos with just beans? Because sometimes I'll even go to Taco Bell and I'll get it with just potatoes. Um, no meat. There's a lot of places that you can use an alternative sauce yeah. and they will gladly give it to you. Yeah. It's already on their menu. Yeah, we do we do the brown rice mm-hmm. and the cheese and the tomatoes and um lettuce and you know, they hook it up for, you know, the fajita. I'm big on fajitas. I love fajitas. I even actually go to um okay. Weiss and they have uh a, you know, they have a smaller market section but everything stays fresh and it comes from local farmers. It's already packaged and ready. All you gotta mm-hmm. do is chop it up. Even even um Twitter. What's that place? It's called Twitter. What's that restaurant? That new market called? Is it called Twitter? Paris Peter. Yeah, we Paris go. Peter. Yeah, they have um, fajitas and stuff already chopped up. Is in the refrigerator section. And when I do, um, mm. I actually um, chop it up and, and put it in with my eggs because I, I mostly my protein. Being diabetic, mm-hmm. you know, eggs is really better for us right. to start our day with. Um, mm-hmm. And I put the fajitas in there, which is vegetables, a lot of green peppers, yellow, a lot of onions. I love fried onions. It's so good. You know, fried rice yes, makes everything good. taste and I good. Love scrambled vegetables mm. yeah yeah and, and and especially like i said fried rice tastes really good you get some flavored olive oil and you know you can add so much flavor mm-hmm. to your stuff you know and then put put some melons on the side you know when you once you're done you just eat your your cantaloupe your melons your watermelon and you feel refreshed you know and of course the supplements Absolutely. is important too i do a lot of fish oil uh they, that came a long way they used to be a real rough supplement to take years ago it used to make you burp for days it tastes mm. like fish that's mm. that's way better now do a lot of fish oil um 
uh, of course, your elderberry, and there's some couple other things that have minerals in it that we need. A lot of people don't realize, too, that they help your electrolytes for your body to stay charged. You have to have your pH balanced there at a certain level. So you need your electrolytes in the, those kind of waters that have that in it. And I think that water, they come from rivers, a lot of that water. So um, you got you to gotta have certain minerals to balance, keep yourself balanced. So that's why multivitamin is important. But we're finding out that a lot of times you got to be careful with the, the store boy joints. You need to go to a, like a real nutritional store where it's like owned by somebody, <laughs> you know, because they're real particular about what they put mm-hmm. on the shelf. It's not like grocery store type products. So I go to a, a store. Mm-hmm. There's only two of them in Maryland. And they everything has like white labels on There's no particular brands. They don't spend no oh, money wow. in branding. Yeah. So well, that's the deal. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you want to? Well, our health and wellness segment was impromptu yes. today, but definitely helpful. And I hope our listeners are uh, grateful for this advice that we provided them today. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm, and I'm, I'm telling you, about, you know, you're going to have some bad days. Um, I know my wife; she really been feeling this. You know, I've been trying to get her exercise for years. How long I know her? Just the doggone nineties, <laughs> and she finally uh, she's been seeing <laughs> results of walking. And she just wants to go out there two and three times a day. So, honey, we were already doing five miles. I can't do more than five miles. I'm not going to make it to this day. You know, I need some, I couldn't even cut the grass today. <laughs> yeah, I need, I need, I told her I burn up energy. You know, I burn up energy really, really fast, you know, being diabetic. We, you know, you, your body don't operate like a normal person. You know, people got to realize that, mm-hmm. you know, um, I don't produce that much insulin. So what I do produce it only, it only can carry me a certain amount of time, <laughs> you know. When you're doing physical stuff, you got you got you got to hold on to that you stuff. Got, huh? You got patient day. Yeah, you got patient day. <laughs> you got patient day. <laughs> yep. But you you you've been really like uh, reversing their ailments, and so shout out to Batman Thank for you. taking Thank the holistic Kelly. way yeah, to yeah. Uh, to keep his body um, safe and healthy for his family, right? Because the family's going to yeah. need you, sir. We can't can't have Batman not being available. That's right. That's right. When you're down for the count, we down for the count. But I want to tell people this too. Um, there's some more studies coming out. Uh, my nurse petitioner even told me this too. Um, some studies coming out now. They're finding out that weightlifting, resistant training, uh, mm-hmm. builds muscles and the muscles actually uh, releases a hormone that actually eats up the glucose that's in your bloodstream. So, in, in other words, it's using it to, to build muscle. So, it means it won't hang around in your bloodstream, making you more sick and destroying your kidney. Because that's what all the pressure is on your kidney. Uh, and then eventually your mm-hmm. pancreas is going to be overworked because, you know, that's where all your insulin is being produced. So, um, anybody out there, you know, try those those uh, 25-day challenges, doing push-ups and lifting barbells while you're watching TV. Every time a commercial come on, Lift, exactly. lift the weights. That's what I do when I'm watching football. Every time a commercial come on, I'm lifting. So, you know, find a challenge for yourself. Get some friends. You know, we gotta we gotta work on our Change bodies, y'all. Habits. Gotta work on our bodies. Absolutely. All right. Couldn't well, agree more. Yeah, yeah. Well, Kelly Holland, I appreciate uh, hanging out with you tonight. And uh, when we get a chance, we will have that conversation. You probably heard about that yourself, but uh, <laughs> it's interesting. Anyway, this I'm is, sure. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Any final words? Sure any, any, any final words for our listeners? Um, yes, final words for the listeners. Don't forget to check out my website, kelly com for any platforms or any media or anything that you want to know about me. It's on my website, kelly com. Also, if you didn't hear anything today, make sure that you listen to this one thing. Never forget to tap back until your unspeakable joy that's yes, all man. i got for you both that's all i got for you charm city i'll take it <laughs> i'll take it all right everybody thank you so much for tuning nice. in and we appreciate all the inboxes on um, whether you're on whatsapp whatsapp and um all the other dms i appreciate you guys um they, you know a lot of encouragement to keep doing what we're doing kelly so uh we appreciate you people all right i'm jerry was live worldwide aka the yes, batman of charm city take care everybody have a great yeah. weekend All right. right. Peace out. Good night. (laughs) Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power. A double X. You are listening to Jerry Voice Live.
Worldwide Podcast. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21, Jerry Walsh Live, Worldwide.